Again, I certainly hope that all of you are doing well as we now prepare to receive the message that we have here for this Sunday. Now, some of you, you may remember in my sermon last week where we saw that God, he will set doors before us. He will not only set doors before us, we know that the Lord, he will open those doors before us. All of us who are of sincere faith and we go up and we knock on that door. And in that sermon last week, you may recall that I ended that sermon with a note of encouragement for all of you to carry throughout this year. With that encouragement being to not pass by the doors of God for some other go- some other doors that you may see on your journey because behind those doors waits nothing but mediocrity and failure. And I don't want you to suffer mediocrity and failure. I want you to succeed. I want you to prosper because that's what the Lord desires for us to succeed and, and to prosper. Now, that thought from last week, the thought of those other doors, as I ended my sermon on last week, it raises a question. With there being other doors and then talking about the doors of the Lord, it raises the question as to how can we tell when a door is God's door? How can we tell when God is opening up doors for us, right? Would be a question that would arise. And so, We read responsibly today from the ninth chapter of Proverbs because the answer to such a question, it lies there in the ninth chapter of Proverbs to where we read responsibly this morning, starting there at the first verse and we went down through the 12th verse. But here in my sermon for today, we're going to take a look at this whole chapter because the ninth chapter of Proverbs, it touches on two different houses, two different schools, if you will, as it points out the differences between both houses, between both schools, which will come to help us understand the differences between the doors that we see on this journey that we are on. If you're looking at that ninth chapter, you see right away there in the first verse that Solomon, he spoke about how wisdom has built her house. And if you remember my sermon from last week, you remember that wisdom is fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is wisdom and he has built a house, a school of wisdom. Now, my key verses for today, they're in the fourth, the fifth and the sixth verse we are going to see an invite from wisdom to her house. That's again, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth verse, then the ninth chapter of Proverbs, those verses, they will serve as my key verses. If all of us are looking at that, let us say, amen. Amen. If you need a moment, just say, preacher, I need a moment. All right, you got it. I give you a moment just for a moment. That's the ninth chapter of Proverbs 4, 5, and 6. All right, we'll see there that the invite from the school of wisdom there, it reads, it states, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, come Eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake what? Forsake what? And live and go in the way of understanding is what we see there in the fourth, the fifth, the sixth verse there of the ninth chapter of Proverbs. I read from the New King James Version. Your Bibles may translate slightly different. Now, from those verses, I want to focus on and I want to talk about today answering a question for a thought, how to tell God is opening doors for you. 
Again, my thought for today is how to tell God is opening up doors for you. Now, when Solomon spoke about the two schools, the two houses in this chapter, I want us to pay close attention to details here. Because like I said, some of us, we may wonder, we may question, how can I tell when God is opening up doors in my life, right? So let us pay close attention here to what what Solomon speaks of here in this ninth chapter. Again, there in the first verse, you will see that Solomon, he spoke about the construction there of the school of wisdom where he stated there that wisdom has built her house. She has hewn, that is cut. She has hewn out, cut out her seven pillars. Now the number seven, that's very significant, right? That's a very significant number for us because the number seven, it represents completeness, doesn't it? It uh, represents perfection, doesn't it? You know, we know the number seven, that is the day that God, he looked at his work and he said, my work is over. When it came to creation, he ended his work. Now, if you skip down there to the 13th through the 18th verse there in the ninth chapter of Proverbs, we'll see that Solomon, he spoke about another house, another school, which belonged to a foolish woman that represents the way of folly. In other words, that represents the way of foolishness. Now, though a woman is mentioned there, I want to be very clear here because I don't want no women to be mad with me on this one. That just as we saw in my sermon last week where, where Solomon personified wisdom as a woman, we see that Solomon was personifying folly or foolishness as a woman as well. I don't want any women to be mad and upset with me. This was Solomon personifying again, both wisdom and folly or foolishness there. Now let us notice there in the 14th verse that Solomon there in that 14th verse, he doesn't point out much that is, distinguishable about the construction of the school of folly, does he? The only thing that is really stated about that house, that school, is that there is a door that we see there in the 14th verse. All of us looking at that, I'm in the ninth chapter of Proverbs, by the way. However, we will see there that Solomon, he does point out that the one that is over that house is sitting there at the door of that school. So there is already a difference here that we will notice here between both of the schools, the school of wisdom, the school of folly. Okay. The difference that we will notice there is their appearance. Keep that in mind. Now, after touching on the construction of both of those schools, of both of those houses, we'll see there in the ninth chapter and the second verse that, that Solomon, he touches on what went on behind the doors of those schools. We'll see him say there in that, seven, that second verse there, we see that Solomon, he spoke about how at the school of wisdom, Wisdom had slaughtered her meat. She had mixed her wine. She had also furnished, that is, prepared her table. So in other words, wisdom had prepared a meal to feed her students. Y'all following along with me here? Now, we know what's being prepared at the school of wisdom, but what is being prepared at that other school, the school of folly? Again, let us take a look there at the scripture that begins there at the 13th verse and runs through the 18th verse there. Where when we look at that scripture, we'll see, we will notice 
There, there is no mention of any kind of preparation, is there? If you go to that school, that school, it ain't prepared anything for you. However, I do want to point out there in that 17th verse that we will see that folly is ready to teach its students a lesson. But, but look at the lesson that, that folly is preparing there. There in that 17th verse, folly is ready to teach its students that stolen water is sweet and, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Now, that may not make much sense to, to some of us right now, but we'll break that down here. We'll break that down here in a moment. But again, I, I want to be very clear here that we are seeing two different lesson plans, if you will, at both of the schools. You know, when you go to school, there has to be a lesson plan. You're, there has to be a syllabus, you know, that will be prepared. You know, a good teacher will have a a good syllabus outline for you, Deanna, when you got to school, they would give you that low syllabus that you would look at and you frown, you know, that first day of school, they would give you that and you was like, oh man, I don't want to be here. <laughs> but hey, at least they showed that they may have been a good teacher because at least they got this syllabus, they got a lesson plan that's, that's planned out and, and prepared, prepared for us, right? They ain't joking around. So in the lesson plans that we are seeing here, wisdom desires to feed its students so that its students are, are satisfied, but so that its students are also strengthened when they go and sit down at their, at his tables, right? Mm -hmm. Now Solomon's statement here about this preparation, about the table that's there in the school of wisdom, I tell y'all that it's hard for me to not think of the 23rd Psalm. Well, in the 23rd Psalm and the fifth verse, David, he said in that Psalm that God had prepared a table before him in the presence of his enemies. Y'all remember that Psalm? And, and David, he said in that Psalm while he was at that table that the Lord had anointed his head with oil. And then David said that there was a cup that was on the table. Y'all remember this part, don't you? And, and David said that his cup, it wasn't half empty or half full. However you want to look at the cup being filled halfway. David said his cup wasn't filled halfway. David said that his cup, it ran over. As you have heard me say before, when you sit at the table of God, you are going to be blessed. And, and I want you to understand, you ain't going to be blessed just halfway. You are going to be blessed greatly. There's a difference between the two. I don't know if you understand that, that there is a difference between being blessed a little and then your cup running over. But then, again, there's that lesson plan at the school of folly. Where that plan, it encourages one to lust. That's what that saying meant there. To steal, right? To lust, to covet what one does not possess. It's not even sitting on the table at the school of folly. So folly itself doesn't possess that bread, that water. Think about that for a moment. So in other words, at the school of folly, Folly, its lesson plan encourages one to, to move wickedly to, to satisfy their pleasures. So, so far, we have seen that the school of folly, it doesn't have an appearance that's distinguishable, nothing truly special about it. And the lesson plan at the school of folly is a plan that is filled of wickedness. So which of these schools would you want to go to? Which of these schools would you want to attend? Which of these two schools do you think that you could actually get something out of that would actually benefit and help you? And we, we're, we're trying to, to discern the differences between the doors that are 
that we'll see on our journeys. Yeah. How can we tell when God is opening up doors for us? How can we tell the difference between one door and God's door? We're going to get there. I promise you we're going to get there. Now, we will see that Solomon, he next spoke to the type of student that each school will invite to come and attend. We'll see this when we take a look there at the third verse that Solomon, he said that maidens are sent out there from the school of wisdom. We see there in the fourth and in the fifth verse there that those that are invited, we are told, are the simple and those that lack understanding, we are told there. Now, again, if we skip down there to the 15th and the 16th verse, we'll see that, hey, the school of folly is sending out invitations as well. It wants students to come to, to it as well, right? And so at the school of folly, we will notice there that there is no mention of any maidens, is it? There again is only that mention of the one that was, was sitting at the door of that school. And, and we're told that in the 15th and the 16th verse that the one that was sitting there at the door of the school would call out to those that would pass by and we will see there that the one that will call out to those that will pass by will also invite those who are simple and those who lack understanding. Do y'all see there that both of the schools are inviting the same student? That they're inviting, they're welcoming the same student, the simple and those that lack understanding. Now, now I want y'all to understand this because somebody somewhere right now saying, oh, Pat, well, that ain't me because I ain't simple. I don't lack understanding. But, but I want you to understand that, that everybody starts out simple and, and lacking understanding. You see, see, everybody starts out simple. They don't know anything. And, and so we can be led one way or the other. We, we can be led to, we can be led through, right? And, and, and nobody starts out knowing everything, bro, Harry. <laughs> nobody starts out knowing everything, Andrew. We, we all have to be taught, don't we? We all, we all have to learn. So in other words, all of us, we start out ignorant. And, and when I use that word, I want y'all to understand, I ain't calling nobody stupid. I ain't calling nobody dumb. I'm just saying, hey, we don't know. We lack understanding. We lack knowledge, right? Everybody starts out that way. So get this, the school of wisdom, the school of folly is calling out to, and it is inviting everybody to come. Now, depending on which of the schools that you attend to this day, I want y'all to know some remain simple. Depending on which of the schools that you chose to go to, even to this day, everyone still is attending one of these schools. But depending on which one you chose to go to, there are many that still lack understanding today. There are many that, that still are easily led to and fro. There are many that are easily again swayed, led astray. And there are many that are ignorant living in the world today. And again, I want to be clear about this. I ain't saying that in a derogatory manner. I am not calling anybody dumb. I'm not calling anybody stupid. I'm just keeping to the sound doctrine and stating the truth. As I said last week, there are going to be several doors on our journey. They are like exits on the highway. You know, how can we tell the difference? How can we know which exit to get off of when we when we speeding down the highway? You know, when when none of us are actually going the speed limit, we just flying down the highway. How do we know which exit to get off of if we're in an unfamiliar places? 
Well, if we have the directions, we look at the signs, don't we? We start looking at the sign. You know, we, we have GPS now on our phones, but, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to where dad had to pull out that atlas. You know, I, I grew up in the golden time. I, I get a lot of that old school and, and new school as well. So, so I ain't got nobody looking at me saying, oh, Pastor, you don't know nothing about no maps and stuff. Oh, we still got an atlas in, in, in my closet. <laughs> but we, but we, we look for the signs to, to get off the exit, to, get, to make sure that we get off at the right exit. So, again, many of us, we wonder, well, how, how can I know when a door is God's door? And how can I know when God is opening up doors for me? What if I told you today that all you need to do is look at the size that's on the door and you will know? What if I told you that? Would you believe it? Well, if you, if you don't believe it, Again, we have this ninth chapter of Proverbs. We're here in this ninth chapter of Proverbs. Solomon has given us the signs that we will see on the doors. Whether you realize it or not, Solomon, he has given us the ins and the outs of both of the houses, the school of wisdom, the school of folly. That's what I spent 19 to 20 minutes talking about. Laying it all out there for you. But again, if some of us are still unable to, to tell the differences between the doors that we may see on the journey, let's take again another look here at what Solomon said here in the ninth chapter of Proverbs. We're going to do it all over again but we're going to do it in detail now so that we can get a better picture of the signs that's on the doors so that we can know for a fact when we are seeing a door of God and when he is opening up his doors for us. Let's start off by right there at the third verse. I want to start off there in the third verse. Where there in the third verse, again, Solomon, he stated that she wisdom has sent out her maidens. We'll start off with the maidens there first. You see, the maidens, they, they become a key for us because if you remember, there were no maidens going out from the school of folly. So these maidens, they are very significant to us. They, they are, are very important to us. Who are these maidens that, that is being sent out from the school of wisdom? In order for us to answer that question, let us again remember that wisdom, Christ is wisdom fulfilled. And so these maidens, they are being sent out from Christ himself. And so who is, what is a maid? Well, maids, we, we should know Maids are those that are employed to do work around a house and outside of the house as well. Maids, they will be sent out to do work for the house as well. Maybe they have to go out to the store, get some goods and come back, right? Maybe the maid has to go out and get the child from school and bring the child back, right? Now, to drop the figurative speech here for all of you today and to be plain and simple here with you, the maidens, they are the employees at the School of Wisdom, which again, Christ is the fulfillment of wisdom. Therefore, again, the maidens being the servants at the School of Wisdom, the, the maids are the servants of Christ. And who is it that are the servants of Christ? Well, uh, yesterday, the servants of Christ was the prophets. Y'all remember them? Yesterday, the servant of Christ was Christ himself. He was the servant of God, right? In this world, with a message, right? And an invitation to the world to again go to, guess what? 
his father's house. Yesterday, the apostles, they were servants of Christ. They were servants of God as well, right? They ministered the gospel again with an invitation to those who would listen to turn away from sin and to, again, go to the father's house. Today, the servants, the maidens of that house are all of those who are ministering the gospel in the world right now, this very second. And I want y'all to understand, I ain't talking about just the pastor and the preacher. Let us remember what is said in the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel in the 19th and the 20th verse that all who believe should go out into the world and should again baptize in the name of the father, the son and the Holy spirit. We are to minister and we are to share the good news of God, his doctrine. We are all servants of the Lord. All of us who are of sincere faith today, we are the maids at the school of wisdom. Now for confirmation, for those that may be looking at me kind of strange on this, I, I want to remind y'all of what's said in the parable of Jesus with that parable of the wedding feast, where in that parable, Jesus, he spoke about there being a certain King and that certain King was representative of God. And the certain king, he sent out his servants into the highways to invite people to the wedding after the time where the initial invitation had been turned down by all of those that were in town. Those that were in town, they didn't want to come to the wedding. And so, again, the certain king that was over the house said, hey, servants, go out everywhere and invite all people to come in here to this wedding hall to the wedding feast. You see the maze of the school of wisdom in, there in that ninth chapter of Proverbs. And I say to all of you that they are those servants that went out into the highway to invite and to then show those that were invited the way to the house, the way to the school. So if you are confused about whether or not God is opening up doors for you, here is the first sign for you, just in case you haven't gotten it yet. Even more simple for you. He will lead you to his doors. If you're not sure that the door that is set before you is a door that is of God, I want you to understand today that God will have led you to that door. Does that make sense? If God didn't lead you to that door, it's time for you to start second guessing that door. Just saying. God will lead you to his doors. He's going to lead you by the Holy Spirit. But hey, if, if you are too distracted from the Holy Spirit, maybe you are unable to, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? God going to use people like me. And we're going to come up and we're going to get in your face and say, hey, what you doing? He's going to use people like you that say, hey, go to your friend over there. I don't know what they doing. I don't know why they going into that door. I ain't told them to go to that door. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to go over there to them and you're going to, hey, well, everything all right? What you doing? <laughs> what you doing over here? <laughs> you, you supposed to be over there. You see, God don't want you to miss his door. And because he don't want you to miss his door, he is going to get in touch with you one way or the other. You are going to know when a door is his door because he's going to lead you to that door. To those that are unsure whether or not a door that is before them is God's door today, I would encourage them to pray on that door. Pray on that door. And then I say to you today as well that you need to seek 
the Lord. Seek the spirit. And let the spirit guide you as well. Not only should you seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but I say to you today that not your ears, your ears don't need to be open. Your heart needs to be open to the wise counsel that God has surrounding you. You see, you get yourself in trouble when you shut off the Holy Spirit and when you shut off the wise counsel that God has around you. And then you wonder why you are confused about the doors that God has in front of you. You, you wonder why you are going past the doors of God. You wonder why you keep wandering over into trouble, into trouble when you are closing, when you're shutting yourself off from the Holy Spirit and when you're closing and when you're shutting yourself off from the wise counsel that God has put around you. Again, I say to you today, not everyone knows everything. All of us, we are simple at times. All of us, we are lacking in understanding at times. So we, again, need to assure ourselves of what is actually in front of us. And the best way that we can do that is by, again, seeking God through prayer, seeking the Holy Spirit, and then having our hearts open to the wise counsel. So all of those that we know, understand the way of God that is around us. That's the first sign for you today. Now, the next sign that Solomon has revealed to us, it was revealed to us there in those lesson plans. You see, again, at the School of Folly, there was no preparation. There was no lesson plan. It was just that one that was over the house that was calling out right there at the door. And so if Jesus is the fulfillment of wisdom, and if Jesus is therefore then over the school of wisdom, guess who it is that is over the school of folly? I don't think that you have to guess too hard about that. The devil. You see, the devil, he, he fulfilled folly when he thought himself to be better than the Lord. And then he waged war against God, and he still wages war against God right now. This very second. You see, in his temptation of Christ, we we saw how the devil will call out. We saw how the devil will tempt those that pass by. We saw it for ourselves. When those that choose to attend his school enter in, the proverb says there that they fail to realize that he hasn't prepared a meal to satisfy and to strengthen them, not physically, but in the soul. The devil is unable to satisfy anyone's soul. The devil is unable to strengthen anyone. But so many people turn to him today. I wonder why. The devil, he will certainly offer the world or a platter as if he can actually give the world on a platter but what the devil actually offers is an empty platter, an empty plate that, again, can't do anything for anybody. It's empty. There in the 18th verse, we are again told that when the devil opened up the doors to his school, the 18th verse there said that the dead are inside. But those who go into the school... They don't know that the dead are there. Why don't they know the dead are there? Well, they enter in and they're blown away by the supposed beauty of the school on the inside. No, there are many people today that's deceived by the appearance. Now, we'll also see there in that 18 verse that Satan, when you enter into that house said that there at that house ain't nothing but a pathway to the depths of hell. So when one enters Satan's house, everything will seem fine at first, but the longer that one stay there, if they actually begin to pull out the magnifying glass and, and they start inspecting the place, they'll start to see the reality. That, that beauty, that beauty will begin to fade. 
that, that, that gold, it'll begin to tarnish. That, that shining silver, it'll begin to lose its luster. Only if one pays attention. But when we take a look back there at the fifth and the sixth verse, when we take a look back there at that school of wisdom. We again will want to see that table that was prepared to satisfy the simple and those that lack understanding. The scripture there speaks of how the students that are invited when they go in and they eat the bread that has been prepared for them, when they drink the wine that has been mixed together for them, again, when they do this, they will be satisfied by the bread and the wine that was prepared for them by wisdom. And again, I, I say to all of you that, that it would be hard for me to miss the parallel here with Christ. There's a parallel in the sixth chapter of Judd's gospel where in the sixth chapter of Judd's gospel, Jesus, he proclaimed himself to be the bread. He said that he is the bread of life. And in the 35th verse there in the sixth chapter of Judd's gospel, Jesus, he said to the multitude that had been following him, he said to them, he who comes to me shall never hunger. It's what he said. And Jesus, he said to those that he who believes in me, he said that they shall never thirst. You see the parallel there? You see, I want you to understand today that again, you can tell when God is opening up doors for you because his doors, they always point to glory. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. When you open up a door of God, his doors, they always point to the blessing. We saw it was a pastor in my sermon last week. You see, God's doors, they always open up to life, true life. In comparison to Satan's doors, which open up to emptiness. They open up to darkness. God's doors, they open up to truth. And that truth, I want you to understand that it is absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful in its holiness. It is beautiful in its righteousness. It is beautiful in the riches of heaven. Do you desire to go through that door? Do you desire to attend that school? I don't know about you, but that's the school that I want to go to. That's the school that I attend this very moment. Now, if you're still not certain if a door is a door of God that is before you, there's one more sign that you need to pay attention to. And it's the most obvious sign that you need to pay attention to. Just look there at that first verse once again. And when you take a look there at that first verse, you'll see that from the very beginning, Solomon, he spoke about the appearance of the house of wisdom. He said that wisdom, that it had seven pillars. So the school of wisdom is distinguished. It is a school that is elegant. It is a school that is majestic. It doesn't look like any other thing. So if the, the building is so distinguished, if the building is elegant and majestic, what do you suppose the door of the school of wisdom look like? It's distinguished as well. It's elegant. It's majestic as well. That is what the door of God looks like. In comparison, there ain't nothing distinguished about the school of folly, the school of the devil. 
There's nothing distinguished about it. The school of folly, it takes on the appearance of the palaces, the buildings in the city. It just looked like the city. It doesn't stand out, if you will. However, as we have seen, while it, the school of folly, while it may look good, if one truly inspected its construction, one would see its flaws. One would see its blemishes. One will see the gold and the silver. It ain't real. There ain't nothing genuine about it. It's faux. It's fake. It's not like the school of wisdom. Now, let's not consider these physical attributes that we're applying here to these schools. Let's not think that we can see these with our eyes. Let's not think that we can see these schools with our eyes. Okay. In, in order for us to be able to tell the differences between these schools, between these doors, I tell you today that we must look through a different lens. The fact of the matter is that if we could see the places where we are taking our souls today, many of us, we will be appalled. We will be afraid. We will be frightened by the doors that we are going through and the buildings that we are entering in. If we can see with these, but we can't see those places with these, can we? You see, the reason why so many people continue to pass by the doors of God the reason why so many people are confused today as to whether or not God is opening up doors for them is because so many of us, we are spiritually blind. So many people today lack the ability of spiritual discernment, as you heard me speak of in the past. So many people today are unable to discern right from wrong. So many of us, we don't know the difference between good and evil, righteousness and wickedness. However, I say to you today that one that is attuned to the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, one that is attuned to the spirit will be able to easily discern the difference between a door of God and a door of the devil. With this in mind, if you see an open door before you today and you aren't being led to that open door, again, I say to you, if you're not being led to that door by the spirit and if wise counsel is advising you against that door, you better not go in. That is a sign to you. Don't think you know more than those that are around you. That's wise. And don't you especially think that you know more than the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tell you don't go in, don't you go in. Last week, I pointed out that there are going to be times on our journey where a door may not be open to us. It may be shut just like that door right there. And and at those times, again, if you don't know whether or not that door is the door of God or the door of the devil, you should do as Jesus said. There are three means. He said, ask, seek, and then he said, knock on the door. If you knock and it is a door of God, God ain't going to leave that door shut to you. God is going to open that door up for you when you knock on it, if it is his door. But if you are knocking on that door, you're beating on that door, and that door hasn't opened up for you yet, I tell you, that's something that you need to do. First, again, you need to pray to God about that door. So many of us, we just beat on and beat on and beat on the door and the door don't open and we don't say a thing to God. And, and, and then we cry out, oh man, God is, 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 is causing me to struggle. We blame God, don't we? But then God say, 
You you hadn't come to me one time. You you had said one thing to me. I'm just sitting here like this. I'm waiting. But we sitting now. Hey, maybe the maybe the file will open up for me. And some of us we 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 do like those cartoons. We go and we 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 pull a wily coyote. We we get some dynamite and we stick the dynamite on the door. And, and we think we're gonna get the road runner on the other side. And, and the dynamite blow up in our face. And, and sometimes the wily coyote, he was smart. He would go and run. He would hide behind a rock, and he would let the dynamite blow up. But the door don't open up. Many of us, we do everything we can to break open that door. And we finally break open the door to nothing but a whole bunch of mess. And so that's the sign for you right there. If you knocked on that door and that door didn't open, it ain't a door from God. If you have prayed on that door and again, God said, hey, I didn't lead you to that door. You better heed that voice. If you have got to that door and your brother and your sister in Christ comes up and, and notices that you continue to struggle trying to beat open that door and your brother and sister in Christ say, hey, you know, that door, it may not be meant for you to, to go through. It's time for you to hit the moonwalk and back out of there. Stop giving yourself heartache over something that does not belong, something that is not intended for you. All you are doing is delaying time from the door that may be right there that God has opened for you, but you was too blind to see it. If you knocked and knocked on the door and that door hasn't opened up to you today, it may be time for you to stop knocking on that door. If you, if you feel you have to take measures to force and break open up doors today, taking measures that go beyond the Lord today, stop it. I have to get on you like a dad on that one. Stop doing that. All you're doing is hurting yourself. Yes, all of these doors and the pathway behind those doors that we see on our journey, yes, they can be rather confusing for us, admittedly. But God has given us exit signs the signs, they have been revealed to us today. And I want all of you to know today that all of you who are sincere of faith, there should be no confusion if you simply adhere and read those signs. There will be no confusion about a door that God has led you to and that God will open up for you. The word of God makes it clear to us when the Lord is opening up doors for us. And if we simply are attentive to the word of God, if we heed the word of God, if we heed the voice of the spirit, and if we heed the wise counsel that the Lord has surrounded us with, I tell you today, you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong. You won't miss his doors. You will go through those doors. And when you go through those doors, again, you're going to be looking at glory there's going to be something there waiting for you. And that what is waiting for you will be from the Lord. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this sermon and that you'll be able to apply what you have watched, that you have heard, that you have listened to, apply it to yourself and then share it with somebody somewhere. And if you haven't done so already, Make sure that you're following the Newfound Faith channel. Be sure that you're following today so that you don't miss a sermon, so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, a Bible study, or a food for thought. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you share the Newfound Faith channel with someone somewhere.